And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at La Cosa Nostra. This is from Quinted Games, and it's interesting because Quinted Games is mostly known for their uh, very strong Euro-style games, games that are getting victory points and so on. This is not that at all. This is a straight-up negotiating game. It's about gangsters, the seedy underbelly life. You are scum in this game, running uh, everything from crooked scandals to murder to prostitution. All that's in this box, but you're trying to make the most moolah cash on the way out. So here's how it plays. In this game, each player is going to pick a crime family, so you'll pick your leader. Uh, this guy eats a lot, and this guy is super old, and this lady's super stern, and that guy will kill you in your dreams. They each will come with a bunch of different gangsters, so you'll place your gangsters in front of you. So, for example, here if I'm playing John Caruso, he has three gangsters, Babyface Tony, Paulo Panino, and Rocco Caruso. Each of these guys has a certain number of guns, so one, two, or three. As the game goes by, you'll be able to buy more gangsters if you want that have two, three, and four guns, but you're going to have to pay for these guys 10, 15, and 20,000 to get the other three gangsters in play. You also start with some money. You'll start with some specific influence cards, a snitch, a henchman, and a schemer card. And you'll start with some starting things, depending on who you are. So this will tell you here, John Caruso, and he starts with a lawyer and a casino. While if you picked uh, Silvio here, he would start with a loan shark, a cop, and a waste company. So that's what it would show on his card. And so you find these. You're also going to have a bunch of businesses, and you're going to have some of those face up here, as well as some Monopoly cards and so on. The game takes place over four rounds, and in each round you're going to pass everyone a certain number of job cards. So everyone's going to get four job cards from the number one pile in round one, then four, five, and five. You'll also get a certain number of influence cards, although in round one you simply get the starting ones. So you're going to look at these, and players are going to take turns either taking a job and putting it on one of their henchmen or taking a business. They're going to be buying these businesses. So this, for example, is a casino. It costs 14000 but each round will give me an income of seven. Uh, this is a politician who cost me 2000 and will give me 1000 but also gives me an extra influence card each round. So you have to decide what to buy from these. And if you buy something with one of these guys, you'll place it on them face down. Just like you'll put a job, if you do a job, you'll put the job on the character face down. Once everyone's done doing that, you can be making deals during this point. Each player will pick someone and then they'll do whatever it says. So for example, let's say my guy wants to do some credit card fraud. Well, anyone can do some credit card fraud. So let's say Paul, he's going to do it. He has one gun, which is going to let him roll a single six-sided die. So he needs a three or higher to get $2,000. So I rolled $2,000 for Pauly. Now, I might have put this on Rocco because Rocco has three guns. Gives me a chance. I didn't roll three here, but here I rolled two that were three or higher's. And so now he's going to get $3,000. The more guns, the more dice you roll. Now, sometimes, for example, cigarette smuggling, you'll see the payout here is much better. But you need to have a cop. I don't have a cop. Oh, well, here I have a lawyer, but I don't have a loan shark. This one really pays off. And so as you look at these jobs, you're trying to figure out, do I have the stuff? Well, you can make a deal with somebody else. And if you make a deal with somebody else, you can offer them any amount. You can make any kind of deal you want. You'll put this on their business card. So, for example, if I have the lawyer, someone else wants to use it, they could put their token on that card to show that they have access to it. And then I reveal the card, and then I give them a payout. Of course, I could have lied about my card or what have you. But... You know, it's up to you, the deals that you make. There's also negative things that other people, here I can deactivate someone else's businessman. I just basically will flip them over. So there's cards that will do that. So as you go through these jobs, as they get higher and higher, I can kill someone else's gangster, just straight out murder them, kill someone else's businessman. Uh, there's bigger cards, subsidiary fraud, needs a building firm and a politician, a waste co company and a cop. Uh, to do a drug lab requires a garage and a drug dealer. 
So there's a lot of these different cards, and you have to decide which of these you're going to do. But you also can buy a business with the gangster, so I might want to buy another politician here. It cost me 2000 And so throughout this deck, there's just going to be things like nightclub, drug dealers, pimps, loan sharks, politicians, waste companies, the different things that you need to solve these. Also, the influence cards, you can be playing these on your turn. There's all sorts of influence cards in the game, snitches and schemers. Here's a henchman that will give you an... Uh, uh, that yeah, you can hurt someone else, or distraction, or they lose a gun, or a machine pistol, which gives someone an extra gun, or uh, the snitch, which lets you look at a card someone else is doing, or exchange the four business cards with new ones. There's all sorts of cards. You can even bring someone back to life and or keep them from getting killed. And after everyone's done playing all their cards, you go to the next round, draw more cards, and keep going. And also, any cards that you have between rounds will give you their income, so you'll get some money from round to round. There is also monopolies if you have the most of loan sharks or the most pimps and the most drug dealers, you'll get these cards which will provide you with additional income. That's it. At the end of the game, it's all about money. All right, so if you have killed people, you're going to get extra money depending on how strong the gangsters were that you killed. You'll add together all your money, and whoever has the most money is the winner of the game. Not a huge fan of paper money, but at least this is like plastic money, so it doesn't crinkle as easily, although it's not cut super well, but it's, it's okay. Uh, the dice are okay. The artwork is kind of grim. I mean, it, it, it's interesting that the, the characters, it's, it, it's caricature style artwork, right? I don't know. They just all look grotesque, which I guess is fine because they're doing grotesque type things over the course of the game. The job artwork and everything. So there's nothing in here that's necessarily bad. It's not super gory. It like shows you what's about to happen. doesn't actually show it happening. So while the, the theming of this game is pretty dark, right, it doesn't necessarily show all the dark stuff. It's like right beforehand. Although, you know, film production is going to be what film production is in this game, right? So the components are okay. There's not a lot of them. I mean, it has to fit in this fairly small box. The rules are pretty easy to understand. They show you in the back what all the different icons mean, and they go through what each of the different cards does in case you're not, you know, completely sure what they have. Hints on how to play the game, etc. I thought, for the most part, considering everything else, the, the components are pretty good. But do realize this is not a kitty style game from how it looks. So this is obviously a heavy theme, uh, as any kind of gangster game is going to be. Now, disclaimer, I myself have designed a gangster game called Nothing Personal. Uh, I was not the, you know, it was certainly something to consider when we designed the game about gangsters. We tried to do so in a way that kind of put the murder and mayhem in the back. I mean, there's murder and mayhem in the game, but not bring it to the forefront so much and not showing pictures of, you know, people getting killed and stuff. This game pushes it a little farther than I'm personally comfortable with and there are some things like prostitution it's hard to like get into a game and be like yeah i got a pimp and whoo i'm running the prostitution monopoly now that's it's, i mean at the same time you know killing someone else's character same same thing right so just be warned if that doesn't bother you i mean that is what it is but realize that's what this game is about the theme may or may not i mean i don't think this cover is going to attract you if you are not interested in this theme but so let's take the theme out of it talk about the game the game has a lot of negotiation. In fact, the game has a lot of reminders for me of I'm the Boss, which is a classic game from Sid Saxon, which does a lot of similar things to this game, where you're working together and you need different people to be able to split cards, to be able to split deals. And that's how this works, too. Uh, the deals themselves are pretty interesting. There's a couple problems with the game, though, that kind of keep me from really liking it that much. I think it's okay. Uh, one of the problems is the game is just too long. Four rounds, it just takes way too long. It seems like it just passes that point. There's negotiation, especially in the final turn, and it goes on and on and on and on and on. Secondly, sometimes the negotiation doesn't matter. I might be able to buy the exact businesses I need, and then boom, I can just start completing jobs. I don't need to negotiate with everyone. I find that problematic that you, if you don't need to negotiate, you have such a leg up on other people. 
And three, the game has a rich get richer problem. If I have a whole lot of businesses, I get a whole lot more money. If I have a whole lot more money, I can do a lot more things. I can buy other people's help for to help finish my jobs. And and if they don't want to buy my, if they don't want to help me, well then I get to sit on my mula cash and get more. And I didn't find any way to really counter that. Sure, other players can go after you, but that's not at the expense of them. That, that doesn't help them, which brings me to point number four. There's some pretty strong take that elements in this game where you can just take someone out for really no reason at all. And if you roll well, they can be hurt. They might have a card that blocks it, but they might not. And so, yes, you probably are going to go after the people who are in the lead, but going after somebody else doesn't really help you at all. It just makes you feel good, and so it doesn't happen as much in the games I play because people are trying to build themselves up more than go after other players. And then my last problem is the dice. I like dice a lot, but if you have the job, you get all the people together, and it doesn't pay off. That's just not very fun. Everyone else's job paid off, everyone else's money, and yours didn't because you just had a bad die roll. And there's a few ways to mitigate dice, but not too many. And so, eh, there's a lot of good ideas in the game, but between its dark overlaying theme, mix that with stronger luck and a longer game than I would like, some serious take that that doesn't really seem to benefit yourself, so you just do it to kind of be mean. It just makes the game drop you all something that I would like to play. So that's La Cosa Nostra. Dice Tower Judgment, thematic, but the gameplay's okay.